The case is solved. I should be going back to Belgium. Why, of course. Only the best transportation for you, Monster Poirot. I'm sending you on the Orient Express. The best transportation for anyone anywhere. Are there many people at this time of year? No, not usually. I shall be going in now. Good day. Oh, hello. Hello. Since we're all strangers here, let me introduce myself. I am Hercule Poirot. And I am Miss Debenham, a governess from Baghdad. And I am Colonel Arbuthnot, currently stationed in India. Now that we have formalities, let us talk. Mary, do you know what? Do you know when this blasted train is going to arrive there? I, I'm getting impatient. I must leave now. I have business. What a queer little fellow. No doubt. You requested a detective? I am in need of some protection. Are you Monsieur Poirot? That's for me to know and for you to find out. For what do you need protection for? I think someone's trying to kill me. You will be thoroughly paid for the job. I'm sorry, but I need a clear-cut, defined job, not premonition. Besides, I don't like your face. Please, wait. Hold on. And no money's going to change that. Please, no. Ugh. What was that? I will attend to it. What is it this time, Ratchet? C'est ne est rien, je me suis trompé. Oh, never mind then. Good night. What is it, Ratchet? C'est ne est rien, je me suis trompé. Oh, never mind. is dead. I must examine this. Nobody touched the body. Touch? Ah. Uh, uh, how was it killed? He was stabbed. Twelve times. I um, see. Aren't you a detective? Yes, I was. Oh, uh, um, yes. Have fun being detective. And Book, since yes. you are the owner of this train, you must help me with this investigation. I would be honored. Order all the passengers to come to me, one by one. Yes, sir. Hey, what's this? A handkerchief with a big fat H on it and a pipe cleaner. We must find who these belong to. Let's start with that handkerchief with the H. Yes. And the train has been stopped by snow. As the conductor, you know, you would know, when Monsieur Ratchet went to sleep. When was that? He went to bed right after dinner. I made us up a sleeping drop for him. 
Is that normal? Yeah, he said he couldn't sleep on trains without it. Is that the, is that the last time you saw saw him? No, you forget. He rang for a conductor about twenty to one. He, c he then said he had made a mistake. In English or French? French. That will be all. Thank you. And now for the next suspect. So you are McQueen, Massachusetts secretary. Yes, I am. Are you aware you're working for a criminal? I really I have no idea. I'd rather cut off my hand than work for a madman. He doesn't even speak French. Did you notice anything unusual last night? Actually, I did. I saw a woman in a scarlet camino heading toward the bathroom. Thank you. That'll be all. So you're Cyrus B. Hardman, Ratchet's butler from America? Yes. Well, no. I'm a member of a detective agency in America. Mr. Ratchet called the agency and asked for representatives to see some threatening letters. He then ordered me to protect him. Thank you. That'll be all. Thanks. Dear Evidence Journal, We have gathered evidence and have some undisputable facts. But let us first talk about the main subject, mentioned by at least five different passengers. A small dark man with a womanish voice. This leaves us a host of possibilities because it can be either a man or a woman, which means that it could be anyone on the train. Now that everybody has given us their evidence, let us proceed to unravel the case. There's a bloody knife in my sponge bag. Take it, please. Yeah, Take it. Let me see that. Ah, uh, yes, the same knife that did the crime. It has the same jagged edge. Please, it wasn't me. Trust me. I quite believe that. Let's find out who really did this. Okay. I do believe I found the scarlet kimono. Where? Mm. On top of my suitcase. Somebody's idea of a joke. <coughs> must, have been, must have put it there while we were interviewing the passengers. Well, I guess that's one mystery that will be solved. Come in! Okay! What's up for you? We are so glad to meet you. Same to you. Is there anything you want from us? Yes, I must see the missus's passport. Okay, here it is. Thank you. Oh my god, I knew it! The, first, it was the grease stain but wasn't random. It was covering up the first letter of the first name. I knew this must be the case. I swear on my honor that she is innocent. She did not leave the carriage at w once. <clears throat> we only changed the passport because we did not want to be suspected. I believe you. Hello. May I see your passport? Thank you. Ah, I see that your Christian name is Natalia. Is this your handkerchief? H is N in Russia. Yes, it is. I always want to grab my handkerchiefs in Russian letters. Why didn't you bring me this information before? You did not specifically ask me. Thank you, I'll remember that. Hello, Colonel Arbuthnot. May I check your baggage? Yes, that would be quite all right with me. Aha, uh -huh. what do we have here? A pipe cleaner. You always use the same brand? If I can get them, I always do. Thank you. Hello, Miss Gibbonham. Hello, Miss Gibbonham. Pleasure to meet you. Same to you. Man, I love these cabins. They're so much bigger than the ones I've been on. Very true, very true. So, Miss Gibbonham? Why did you lie to me? That isn't even your real name! You were the nursemaid of the little lady Armstrong who was murdered and kidnapped. How did you find out? I am my name. I am a race. You just got burned. I've come up with a conclusion. This case was very complicated. There are two solutions. I'll read them off for my evidence journal. I will tell you both of them and then I will share book and Dr. Constantine to see which one is more likely. It shall be so. Here is the first solution. The enemy that wanted to be defended from board of the train at Belgrade or else at the next stop by the door that was left open by Colonel Arbuthnot, who was provided with the suit of a conductor which he wore over his own clothes. He also had a passkey that enabled him to gain access to all the 
compartments, even when they were locked. He committed the crime and then left the knife in an empty bag in the compartment next door. He actually left and thrust his uniform into an empty compartment. The watch can be explained by the fact that Rapture forgot to set his watch back on an hour. It was actually a quarter past twelve when he died. What about when he talked to me? That must have been a third person who entered the room to check up on Ratchet and found him dead. That speaker could not have been Ratchet because he does not speak French. That is not the solution! It is deficient in many in dozen minor points. I came up with the second solution, but I cannot remember the little bitty parts, so I must read this off my evidence journal. As I'm sure you are all aware, a girl named Daisy Armstrong was kidnapped and murdered three years ago. Her parents paid the ransom money and were, her sh and were shown to the dead body. The man who killed Daisy was Ratchet. No! I knew it! His real name was Cassetti and he had kidnapped before and was likely to do again. Yet, had he not been murdered by you. Every one of you played a part in the Armstrong family. Be it cooks, maids, or nurses, all of you were related to Lily Daisy Armstrong in some way. Therefore, you must have killed Ratchet. I propose that each one of you stabbed him one time to ensure that none of you would ever be caught. Each person provided evidence and alibis for one, one another, with it all working out like some sort of fantastic play. I am sure that even you do not know who actually killed the wicked man. It was dark, and nobody would have noticed when he died. He just kept stabbing. Oh, you found this out once in a row. You don't know how much pain I felt. I had to do it. I had to. <laughs> I'm going to let you guys free for two reasons. First of all, nobody's sure killed Cassetti, so I can't arrest anybody. Second, I think that Cassetti should have died. He was a wicked man, and he got what he deserved. Stop messing around! I like this pony. Go away. Oh. Go please. away! Guys, you're... Oh. <laughs> Hello, Miss Jimham. It's a pleasure Pasta. to meet you. Pasta! Pasta. <laughs> <laughs> Turn it off! Yeah.